Quiet, please. Quiet, please. The Mutual Broadcasting System presents Quiet, Please, which is written and directed by Willis Cooper and which features Paul Nero. Quiet, Please, for tonight is called Below Fifth Avenue. (gasps) You'll just have to excuse me. Sudden sounds and things like that. And I'm just so upset. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, for heaven's sake. Yes, yes, here I am. Hello, he's not here. He... what? I say he's not here. Me? I'm... I'm his... Um, manservant. No, no, I am not here. Oh, all right, all right. No, I will not have you coming here. I'm just in a tizzy. You can't come over here. What? Oh, hello. Huh. I declare I'll never get adjusted. Television, radar, wars, Russian Bolsheviks, people flying across the ocean every which way. It wasn't like that in my day. My, I wish I had a bottle of beer. Oh oh no, what am I saying? Heck, I never want to drink beer again. No sir, it certainly wasn't like this in my day. There wasn't anybody flying every which way across the ocean in my day. Not till this young fellow did it. Well, sir, when I heard he was going to fly the ocean, I just said to myself, I'm going out to Roosevelt Field and watch him take off. For after all, didn't he used to fly the mail right smack over our house in South Peak in Illinois practically every night? I just felt like an old friend and simply had to see him take off. So I went out to Roosevelt Field, and my... What a journey that was. Of course, I got there too late, and all I got was a lot of greaseball mechanics standing around and shaking their head and feeling sorry for Lindy. Well, I had my revenge. Take it from me. I took a girlfriend of mine to the fights at Yankee Stadium the next night. This Jack Sharkey or George Sharkey or, or Tom Sharkey or whatever his name was was fighting this big hooligan named Maloney. And the announcer stood up and said, Lindy was way out there over the ocean, and we should pray for him. And we all stood up and prayed, even this Gwen Darling that was with me. I mean, her name was Darling. And you know what happened? That was the 20th day of May, 1927. And on the 21st, Charles Augustus Lindbergh landed at Le Puget Field in Paris. Wasn't that wonderful? I sent him a cable. But I suppose he got so many cables. My, my, it seems like just yesterday. Oh, boy, does it. Where was I? Oh, yes. After the fights. You know, it's funny. I don't remember who won. We came downtown on the subway. But then Darling wanted to ride on top of the bus. So we got off somewhere and got on top of the Fifth Avenue bus. She lived down in the village. Greenwich Village, you know? I went past her house yesterday, and it isn't there anymore. And there isn't any Gwen Darling in the phone book, so how can I find her? I ask you. Well, anyway, she wanted to walk. Oh, those people that always want to walk, and I have a bunion as big as heavens. I always say there's nothing worse than a bunion. Well, we got off at 14th Street, and 
we panned down Fifth Avenue. When we got to 10th Street, there was a great big hole in the middle of the street. And Gwenny looked at me and said one of those awful cliches people always say, you know? New York will be a nice town if they ever get it finished, won't it, Ronnie? I read the New Yorker too, darling. It wasn't the New Yorker, it was the Digest. Uh, whatever it was, I read it. What do you suppose they dig those holes for? Somebody lost a dime, I suppose. Huh, that was in life last week. It was not. I made it up. Isn't it wonderful about Lindy? Everywhere you go, there's a hole in the street. Now that's a great remark. What are they for, Romney, really? It's all full of little men who live down there. They have to come up for air sometime. Really? Oh, you're kidding. I am not. There's little green men down there, and they eat covering up the electric cables. That's what causes short circuits. And they bore holes in the pipes down there, cause water mains to burst, and they just freeze the tickets with things. And when they get mad, they blow the manhole covers off and cause all sorts of trouble. Really, Romney? He'll believe anything, won't you, darling? <laughs> well, you're so convincing, Romney. <laughs> you're a little idiot, Bunny. I'm two inches taller than you are. Oh, be still. Romney. What? Let's go look down there. Down where? The excavation. What for? I want to see what's down there. Pipes. I want to see. Well, go look, for heaven's sake. I'm afraid to. Jiminy crickets. Come on. You don't have to drag me. I couldn't drag a great big horse like you. Romney Greer, you can't talk to me like that. Go on. Nothing but pipes. I said there were pipes, dear. And wires. Cables, we'll call them. Romney. What? Look, a ladder. What? Well, Let's climb down. You dotty girl. I want to see what's down there. Well, I don't. Romney, please. No. Please, Romney. No. Come on. Gwen, get away from that ladder. Come on, Romney, I'm scared. Oh, you. You. Us. Get your fingers out of the way. Look out, Romney, there's a loose run in the... Look! Oh, Romney, are you hurt? Mm. Now how are we going to get out of here again? Hey, you. <gasps> Who's that? What are you doing down there in that hole? Uh, um, what hole? What are you doing down there, I said. Why, um, we were just, um, looking around. Well, you just wait till Van catches you. You'll wish you hadn't. Now see what you've done. Let's get out of here, Romney. How, fool? You can't get out. I saw you break that ladder. Sir, I'm very sorry about the ladder. Fat lot of good that'll do you when Van sees it. Who's Van? <laughs> and who are you? Don't worry about me. I just work here. Excuse me, sir. I can't see you. It's so dark down here. <laughs> Look down at your feet. Eek! Van! Van! Hey, Van! Help! Here, here, what's going on here? Sir, This big I... fat woman feeds on me, Van. Pull her off. Why, the fat lady should be more careful. Here, give me a hand, mister. Why, isn't she a whopper? Gwen, you get up. Oh. Oh. I thought I saw a little man. Oh, he's still there. Romney. My throat. Win my throat. <sighs> now perhaps you will believe me when I make a statement, Miss Darling. You said... You said... 
Uh, did he tell you about the little man, young woman? I was just joking, sir. I made up a fantastic story about little men. Mm-hmm. It was made up out of whole cloth, sir, I assure you. A likely story. Sir? A likely story. We shall have to go into this. Romney? Hey. Look at the little man. Why? What about him, ma'am? He's eating the covering off the cable. Well, after all, lady, it's time for his midnight lunch, isn't it? I give you my solemn affidavit. That's what he was doing. It isn't bad enough to climb down into a hole in Fifth Avenue at midnight, no. We have to find a little man, and a little man has to eat cables yet. I remember I thought to myself, golly, I thought, it's a good thing I didn't tell Gwen to eat people. The little dickens would probably have been asking for mustard to put on the back of my neck. I tell you, it was just the most fantastic thing I ever experienced. I remember it just like yesterday. But you haven't heard anything yet. For the first time in her life, that darling woman was speechless. I could have knocked her eyes off with a stick if I'd had a stick. She didn't say a word until a little man took one last bite of the nice lead and came over and grabbed her. Ah! Walked right up the side of the excavation with her over his shoulder. I could hear her hooting and hollering all the way down to Fifth Avenue. And the little man came scooting down and grinned at this fan fellow. She won't come back, then. Now, maybe she won't. Well, we better move the hull. Better do which? Move the hull. Where to, Van? Ah, make it the corner of Vanderbilt Avenue and 42nd. Vanderbilt and 42nd? Right by Grand Central. Goody. And watch that turn at 42nd Street. It's tricky. Oh, sure, Van. 42nd and Vanderbilt. And make it snappy. Let me tell you now. I looked up, and I saw the buildings on 5th Avenue sliding by the top of the hole. Pretty soon, the streetcar tracks at 14th Avenue went overhead. We picked up speed, and the hole was just whizzing up 5th Avenue. Me? I just sweat bullets. Bail out? How could I bail out? We were going 40 miles an hour, and the thing was like 15 feet deep if it was an inch. Besides, this fan fellow had me by the wrist, and I couldn't wiggle. I'm not going to answer it. I simply will not answer it. I won't. I won't. I know who it is. Oh, well, for goodness sakes. I said you cannot come here. Van, listen to me. What? No, Van. Yes, Van. No, Van. I will not. No. Now you will stop calling me, Van. Goodbye. Yes, that was the same Van. I will not see him. Where was I? Oh. So I parked the hole at the busiest spot, Vanderbilt in 42nd, and the front end of a taxi cab fell in the hole. I had to move it. And then I said, well, I guess I'll be going. Because I was scared green, you see. Nothing like this had ever happened to me. I had about all I wanted, but this fan wouldn't hear of it. Now, buddy, we're going to find out how you know so much about our business. Mister, honestly, I don't know anything about your business. I just made it up. Really, I have a very active imagination. Yes, you have that. And you imagine the little men eating lead off the cables. Yes. Funny, they never ate it before. You heard what I said. What else did you imagine? Nothing. Well, imagine something. What? Anything. I want to try an experiment. Well, should I imagine these little men haven't got any names? That's awfully easy. Let's see. Hey, you, what's your name? Me? I haven't got any name. You're Melvin. I am not. I haven't got any name. Well, well, imagine something else, Mr. Uh... Greel. Romney Greel. I am a sign painter by profession. Imagine something else, Mr. Greel. Well, uh, 
I imagine everybody who comes down in this place is turned into a little man. Hmm, is that so? Go on, Mr. Grail. I had a sudden inspiration. Aha, I said to myself. Aha, and then I spoke out loud. I imagine I'm out of this hole and down at 10th Street and 5th Avenue again. Whoosh, zip, bang, bounce. I am staring at the church at the corner, and there isn't a sign of a hole in miles. You know what I said? I said, wow. Wowee, I said. And I started to cross the street and fell flat on my face. Why? I tripped over my pants legs, and I heard a loud shriek, and there was a policeman galloping up the street away from me, turning his head over his shoulder with his eyes booking out and yelling bloody murder. Well, I said, for goodness sakes, and I tried to get up. I tried. Darn near fractured my patella. Why, my suit was too big for me. My suit was way too big for me, and I knew why the policeman ran away. I was a little man. I was two feet high. I'd imagined one too many things. What was I to do? Goodness, I couldn't go home this way. It was all I could do to crawl. Then I had a brilliant idea. I slithered out to the middle of the street, and I sat down surrounded by my clothes. And I said in a loud voice, I imagine that hole is right back where it started. And there was a noise, and I looked, and here she came. A row of red lights roaring down the street at 30 miles an hour, and the hole pulled up right there at my feet and stopped. And there was this fan, sitting on the edge, grinning like an ape, drinking a bottle of beer. <laughs> nice imagining, Romney. Have a drink? Well, this was prohibition, remember? A bottle of beer was a bottle of beer. So I had one with the fan. Pretty soon I felt better. So we went below and had a very nice sociable session, Van and I. You know, Romney, you could be very valuable to me in my business. Well, sign painting isn't really so ludicrous. I mean, lucrative. Inform me of your proposition. Have another beer. I don't mind if I do. This is very delicious beer. Make it yourself? Yeah, the little men make it. Convenient. Convenient, I mean. Could you tell me something about your work, Van, old boy? Well, let me see. We have the water main department. Water main? Now they're in charge of breaking the pipes that carry uh, water to the houses in Manhattan. Why don't you have a department that... Attaches the water pipes to the gas pipes, old boy. Excellent. Now you see how valuable you could be to me. It's nothing. <coughs> Joe Bob? And the telephone division. Yes, Melvin? My name's not Melvin. Look, Ben, we just got the Chelsea Exchange hooked up with Eastern Pennsylvania. They won't get that unscrewed till day after tomorrow. Oh, fine, Melvin. Don't call me Melvin. I imagine they'll get it fixed before that, Van. You know, the, the telephone... Oh, darn you, now look what you've done. Now we've got all the work to do over again. What? You and your imagining. Make him stop, Van. Romney, don't imagine anything until I tell you. Oh, all right. Go ahead, Melvin, and get those manholes blown up there in the Bronx. Oh, all right. You leave us alone now. I want to hear more of this work, Van. Well, our principal is digging holes. You see, I was elected commissioner of annoyance and inconvenience on a platform of more holes for Manhattan. But to tell you the truth, I haven't been able to get them. We have to keep moving holes all over town, and they get in pretty bad shape. Just as we got traffic snarled up in one location, the little man reports a new place where everything's going smoothly, and we have to move a hole. We're just worn out. Oh, I imagine another 10, 20 years. Yes, yes. What, Romney? Why, I imagine you'll have millions of holes. You'll have so many that you will leave them standing for months. 
Thank you, fella. Ah, oh, thank you, Romney. Millions of holes. Oh, I can see Madison Avenue dug up for blocks and just staying that way for months and months. Oh, man. I imagine that's the way it'll be. Ah, oh, thank you, Romney. Don't mention it. You're hired. I like another plea beer. A what? Set so, so a plea beer. Oh, sure. Here. Thanks. Hey, I have an idea. What? Let's put a hole right at each end of the Brooklyn Bridge. Ah, oh, that'd be fine, Romney. But I haven't got any spare ones. Oh, I imagine we could find a couple. Hello? Hey, Van. What? There's a beautiful new hole at each end of the Brooklyn Bridge. Oh boy, and the Dodgers are playing a doubleheader today. You can thank Romney for that, Melvin. Don't call me Melvin! Well, Romney, you really are hired. This is... Romney. Who's that? Romney. Romney Greel. It's Gwen. Hello, Gwen. You come right out of that, Romney. <laughs> I'll call a cop. Oh, I don't imagine you will. Hey, well, well, all right, I won't. I'm going to stay here, Gwen. You come with me. Nope. Romney, I love you. Nonsense. That's right, nonsense. I'll come down there after you. Oh, I imagine you'll go home and go to sleep. Well, good night, Romney. Can you beat that? She went away. Sure. Got any more beer? Millions. Say, what do you think will become of that girl? Don't worry. I imagine I'll see her in 20 years or so. Beer? Thanks. Say, can, can I blow up a manhole? Sure. Where? In front of the office where I work. Where, where I worked. Broadway and 8. Sure, press the button. No, this one. This one? Yep. Okay. Hey, Van. Van. Hey, little man. Van, I pressed the wrong button. Gosh, it's dark in here. Oh. Oh, well, that beer made me sleepy. I'll take a nap and then I'll look for him. I imagine I can get a good long sleep. Well, I can assure you I got a good long sleep, all right. Gracious. When I woke up, it was dark as pitch, or whatever it is. And you know what? That scoundrel had moved the hole. And there I was, coming to somewhere down below Fifth Avenue, and no way to get out. Well, did I have a tizzy? And I was so hungry, and that beer, what a hangover. Well, I stood it as long as I could, and if I could have found that van, I'd have shaken him till his teeth rattled. But there wasn't a sound. I was all alone. Well, I tell you, I was starving. Finally, I found the telephone cable, tore it down, and ate about two yards of it, and I felt better. So I slept a little again, and I was awake, so help me, by somebody hammering over my head. Well, to make a long story short, it was the telephone company. They'd come down to fix the cable I'd eaten, you see. So I got out. Oh, I was a sight, but apparently I'd imagined in my sleep that it was the right size again, so I wasn't troubled by that. And I climbed out of the hole, and I must say it wasn't as good a hole as we had when Van and the little men were there. And I came out, and finally I found this place to live. And you know when it was I got out of that hole? The day before yesterday. Twenty-one years after I blew it up. Accidentally, of course. Yes, sir. Oh, there's Van. The dickens with him. Just as soon as he found I was out, he started pestering me. 
I won't answer the door, so you can just knock till your knuckles bleed. No. Oh, for goodness sakes. Now listen. Good evening, sir. I am introducing an offering for sale, a new type of house. Romney. When? Oh, Romney. I've been looking for you for 20 years. Well... Uh, hello, Gwen. Where have you been, Romney, darling? I've been away, dearest. Are you married? Oh, my, no. Romney, it's still leap year. You have to marry me. Why? Why, Gwen? I imagine I'd like that. Gwen! Kiss me, dearest. Oh, how I love you. Oh, Romney, Romney, don't ever leave me again. Leave you? Ha! I can just imagine me leaving you and going back with that fellow again. What am I saying? I heard you, Romney. I heard you imagining. Come along. Well, goodbye, Gwen. Romney, who is this man? Come on, Romney. No, 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 Romney. Bring her along, Romney, if you want to. Ah, I can just imagine her coming with me down to that place. <laughs> well, what are we waiting for, Romney? Come on, kids, we got a lot of work to do. Park Avenue's all torn up and Madison. And I've got my eye on a place at 10th Street and 5th Avenue, where we started out, Romney. Come on, Gwenny. Lead the way, Mr. Van Winkle. The title of tonight's Quiet Please story was Below Fifth Avenue. It was written and directed by Willis Cooper, and the man who spoke to you was Paul Neerum. Paul Moss played Van. Hyde Vert was Gwen. Kenny Robertson was the announcer. The music for Quiet Please is played by Albert Berman, who also composes the special music for the program. Now for a word about next week's Quiet Please. Here is our writer director, Willis Cooper. You never met any of the characters in tonight's story, and you never will because I invented them all except Van, for whom I thank Washington Irving. As to the whole, it's there at Fifth Avenue and 10th Street, or was when I came to the studio tonight. Maybe you'd like to go look if you live in New York. Next week's Quiet Please is called 100,000 Diameters. Until next week at the same time, I am quietly yours, Ernest Chapel. Quiet, please, comes to you from New York. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.